BioBits are the true stories, challenges, and triumphs of global gems who have elevated themselves to success. These are real people, real stories. Hi, my name is Bert Oliva, and in this episode of BioBits, we're featuring Ron McGill. Who is Ron McGill. I'm Ron McGill. I'm the Communications Media Relations Director here. Some call me the Goodwill Ambassador here at Zoo Miami, and I've been here for 35 years. What is the history of the zoo? Metro Zoo was originally when it was known as Metro Dade County. We had Metro Bus, we had Metro Rail. That Metro was part of the Parks and Recreation thing. I was trying to keep it in that Metro family. But then what happened was Metro Dade County changed its name to Miami Dade County because everybody realized that Miami is the name that is internationally recognized. It's a high Latin influence here. You know, and in Spanish you'd call it Soloico de Miami. So people say Zoo Miami, zoom over to Zoo Miami. It just seemed to be a different kind of twist to it and that's why we went with Zoo Miami. Why do you do what you do? This is probably one of the most rewarding jobs anyone can have. I come here every day surrounded by beautiful wildlife. I get to work with great people. I get to look at kids come in here and have this expression of wonder. I do what I do today because I went to the Bronx as a kid and I remember that effect that these animals had on me. How it inspired me to care more about them, to learn about them. It's a tremendous reward to be able to come to a place that inspires people. What does the future have in store for Zoo Miami? The great thing about the zoo is it's a living thing. It's always growing, always changing. And in the process right now, we're going through a huge amount of construction. The amphitheater's under construction. We've got a new front entrance. Flamingos are gonna be actually outside of the ticket booth so people will be able to see animals before they even enter the zoo. The new Florida exhibit, which is gonna feature so many of the animals we have here in Florida. Things like the panther, the alligator, the crocodile, otters. The zoo will continue to change. It'll continue to grow. So just because you've been here, doesn't mean when you come back the next time, you're not gonna see something new. When is the best time to visit the zoo? If you're gonna come here once a year, Year. Plan your trip between November and March, and you're gonna have the greatest time on the planet. You can have great times other months of the year too, but it can get warm, I'm not gonna lie to you. And I also tell people this, if you're gonna come to the zoo, come when it first opens. That's when the animals are most active. If you come out here at one o'clock in the afternoon in August and September, and you see an animal sleeping under a tree, don't ask me why is the animal sleeping under the tree? Because it's one o'clock in the afternoon in September and it's 95 degrees outside. The animal's smart, that's why he's sleeping under the tree in the shade, okay? Just understand that, and I think people will enjoy it a lot better if they plan their trip though. What is your favorite animal at the zoo? My favorite animal, unfortunately, just recently passed away. There was a gorilla here named JJ, and I had the privilege of working with him for over 30 years. And I never really worked directly with him, but I had a relationship with him because anytime we had to do a documentary, we had to do a news piece, and I needed him in the piece, I always brought him treats. And for whatever reason, he seemed to like me. And I kind of liked him a lot too. And unfortunately, we just recently lost him to heart disease. If I had a favorite animal, it would have been him. Other than that, you know, I think the standard answer is whatever animal I'm working with at the time. What is the monster masquerade? This has become an annual tradition here in the Miami area because the fact is, it's the greatest Halloween party ever. It's an adults only Halloween party. We've got six open bars sponsored by Bacardi. We've got uh, great entertainment. We've got the haunted house. The costumes, because it's adult only, there's something to be said about people. Once they put on a costume, they kind of think they're anonymous, it gets a little freaky. I kind of like it. It's one of those Halloween parties where the entertainment is no longer the Dr. Wilde's creepy house or the liquor, it's the costumes themselves. People come here and some of the things they wear are totally outrageous. It's fantastic. I really hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed making it for you. If you know of anyone that should be featured in one of our shows, please do not hesitate in contacting us. And please don't forget to subscribe, repost, forward, share, do whatever it is that you do to help us change the lives of over 100 million people in a positive way. I'll see you soon.